uh, I posted uh, it tonight. I was re re recalling and thinking about things that Roger Toll and Gary Cairns have said to me. What I know goes on with the managing partners f store level pharmacists of, in the group is that there's a point where without even having to ask where they get their measurements from or, or, or their readings on certain types of uh, as it pertains to certain aspects of character assessment that they're they're both very much involved in. I could name a few. It's to probably their generosity and my generosity to them and my additional future risk that I don't name them. But I've known people under their employer say that they instilled terror in in them and that, that has a lot to do with them speaking in areas where they would, would really need more qualifications behind them than being uh it's granted it's it's every business owners and founders province to say who can and cannot work for them that's not what i'm disputing it's just um If they say they've got this or that read on a certain person and they, they know this or that fact or detail about a certain person, then any scientific mind is going to say, well, how? I want to think how. And uh, so to them being in a scientific field that where they abscond, are obviously absconding from science, but scientific method and from qualifications that they don't have but would need to have in order to say what they would say what they what they say but we would have to have such qualifications in order to say in order to not be total dickheads but if you want to ask yourself the question of well what could enable a person without qualifications to make statements that would require them to otherwise have qualifications in other fields. Why do it when there's another where there's a thousand and one ways for you to as a business owner say, I simply don't want this person to work here. And 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 you'll find that the answer to that question is well, if they're religious. Uh, I understand that there can be plenty of peaceful religious people who a humanitarian and they're and to them they're religious their entire religious um mythology is 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 a uh, something that has done nothing but produce uh ways for them to try to be more humane as people and so if you ask me well where's the difference it it would depend on what other responsibilities that person takes on board and that is, you know, so it, it's, it's, it, this might make more sense to you as you think about it. And it might be why you also consider why you could probably have a religious serial killer and the mainstream media will try and say that they were a serial killer because of, even if they were saying themselves, no, God told me to kill all these people. Uh, the mainstream media, if the media company was owned and operated by a religious person, then sure they'll put, they'll pay for a psychologist to come in and say oh that's not a, that was that that serial killer surely can't be a proper god fearing man even though the term uh god fearing is itself morally dubious and belief in god is is a morally dubious term as well <coughs> But I was talking about how uh, there's a dimension to crimes per crimes committed by religious people where they think that the, at best they were just trying to obey the will of a of a supernatural being. So how could they be wrong? And it's easy to see why uh, like military initiatives, for instance, might confuse them on that front because 
if they were if they um had troops go and pacify a region and kill a bunch of foreign families and and then off off duty the troops could visit the the brothel of the same uh the the the, the same the same foreign country then then none of that was it wasn't even it not not only was it not killing or murder what they were doing on the fields while pacifying it wasn't even fucking when they went to the brothels um you know i, I i'm not this this is not my lingo it's theirs i'm i'm not in a i'm not really a, a great fan of of military in certain respects but um Oh, where was that? So yeah, certain religious minds genuinely need, uh, I think, and there'll be, there's two sections where, I, two ends of the spectrum where I'd see these minds occurring, and one is in, one is in very poverty, low, low um, budget, poverty, cheap, shit cheap demographic hardly had any friends and triple shooting spree of three women that but that all three of them dumped the guy and so and the other end is re- religious men that own and are operating uh companies of, of, of businesses that have gained notoriety and they can be very philanthropic in every other respect and they, they aren't necessarily even thinking that their philanthropy is a front for a bunch of other, a bunch of um, disgusting, disgusting activities in other areas. Uh, that their philanthropy and their commercial and economic success has now made them some security, or so, security enough for such for such things. I think there's a weird gradient where you have to wonder, well, how could, how deliberate could it, could, um, you wonder, well, they, they can't just do that by accident, but they can't, they also would have to have to be who they are in, in terms of being philanthropists and, and being successful in, in the economy, then there's no way they could do that by accident. And so there's this, confusion there where I think what is being ignored is is how religion makes it very easy not so much to say that you can blur the difference but you can call something something else in other terms uh, so a gesture of help for instance suppose that um, suppose a guy that owned, owned a healthcare franchise was on the lookout for uh, males in his, in his, in the city that he operated in whose mothers and fa- and fathers weren't there to help them realize who they truly were and and they were in this businessman's mind viewed to be truly gay but had no one to support them as gay so this businessman thinks well I'll be the one to support them as gay and then they'll owe me everything cuz I'll help I'll have helped shown them the true way and help them know who they really are and then their initiation process is that they use their franchises and corp, uh, corporate surveillance equipment to ask the the person to perform a sex act in front of the surveillance equipment for them as a proof of that they're that they're ready to be initiated you know, and, and and so in that in that person's mind, they could just be going, well, what's what's that person's complaint going to be? I, I was I, I was truly here to help them not only uh, realize who they really are, but you know, no more opportunity than they could have ever known. And and that and in that person's mind, it's this is a tricky in principle is a tricky subject because. Um, what I think religion does is it helps it helps them 
the activist in that field professionally. And if they fuck up, they can do what Rupert Murdoch says and bury in mistakes, as he says, and do everything he can to try to um, cut new trail from any of his fuck ups directly to him. Uh, so, essentially, all the religious person needs to be able to, to, to do is go, well, how can I, without leaving and stepping outside of my own faith and religious n- wise, see any any different but if they are professional in, and know certain things about the the economy and, and the professional world and the world of businesses then they will know certain things um, but they will they'll privately think that their their reign to success and their ongoing success is is part of parcel of them being loyal to their religion and their religion being fulfilled in their surrounding life and them being appointed to be someone really special in a religious sense. So the woman in the bathtub in America who drowned her kids in the bathtub in the US and then she's in court saying, uh, I killed my boys. Uh, God told me. God told me to drown them and, and kill them in the bathtub. And she needed a court judge to tell her that it, no matter what, no matter what you think about whether a god, you think a god said that to you or not, you obviously need to know that you can never do anything like that. Um, and then Americans who want to um, whinge, whinge that they wanted to take the Ten Commandments in the stone statue down off the off the premises to the courtroom. Because they think that this Ten Commandments where women were spoken about like uh, Nintendo Game Boys and tampon packets and um, USB sticks, that this Ten Commandments are so important from Moses that they need to make a, a stone statue to them and keep them on the, on the front of a, court, of a courthouse. What I think goes on is that, yeah, a religious person, if, if unless they have companies, um, the security that they think is accorded to them by having companies in uh, in their possession, then they'll be rounded up. I think made accountable, if not by police, just at the most basic level of entry in local police forces. But if they have, if they do have whole companies and they've still kept to the same sort of level of philosophy that they had prior to getting involved in business, then their minds will fester as if to think in a way that I think is almost worse than domestic and, and uh, community level religious criminal offenders. And they'll have even more ways of trying to excuse any foul play that they're up to. Um, not only a, to, to reasons other than religion. It's, it's like a... Um, But yeah, some dumb companies keep making the rest of Canberra, for instance, confront that 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 that's too religious to be taken seriously, and and one company in that way disposed is Capital Chemist, and I worked for them for nine years. So if anyone wants to talk to me about details of what transpired during those nine years during my employment, I, I'm more than happy to answer any of the questions. But um. I learned that they absolutely realize that not only is being private sector an edge for what they want to do, but being religious and in private sector is an edge. And it, that's why um, no, more ennobled fa- and endearing pharmacists, whether they were locums or studying to try to get into the company, would talk about how, you know, if a, if a customer is so sick and, and there's a Sol Patterson's chemist closer than a Capital Chemist store, then refer them to the, tell them to go to the Sol Patterson store or um, words to that effect and 
and now when you look at the slogans that they have have, have had on Capital Chemist throughout the years, that uh, we know what matters, everybody needs their Capital Chemist. It, it can in, I've, I've, I've listened to people talk about being thrown off from talk like that because for any sort of scientist to think that they could have any sort of insight to what everybody needs and to, and to not think it unethical to advertise as much, they would have to have some sort of scientific means to gauge an insight into what everybody uh, wants, needs, or thinks about. And unless they could do that, it would be un unscientific to put it on a slogan. And if they're in a scientific business, then it would be unscientific to put it on a slogan, and it would be unethical to put it on a slogan if they were capital chemists. But everybody needs their capital chemist has been the slogan for capital chemists. So then you should ask the owners of capital chemists, well, how is it you think you can ascertain um, any sort of insight into knowing what everybody needs? And to do that, and then to not want to even... And, and what's more is, like, if you could do that, why the fuck wouldn't you keep that knowledge to yourself? If you would even, even want to call it knowledge, why put it on your slogan? It's like they, it makes you feel like if you got a, a penis wart and you showed it to someone there and they gave you treatment for it, then you'd be a, you'd you'd want to you'd want to worry that within two days there would be a slogan on the Capital Chemist shop saying everyone with a penis wart should come to Capital Chemist. Given how how easy it is for them to want to stipulate certain facts about um, everybody, but Capital Chemist do that and they'll continue to do that until other wiser people in their number throw throw overturn Gary Cans and Roger Tor. And one person that won't be is Peter Downing because I've listened to him. I've DJed at his presentations where he's talked about uh, a Peter Simon or some some homo song of, from from little things, big things grow. It applies as much to um, ambitious and and perhaps impressive rights movements to to genital warts really from little things, big things grow. And I think that's uh, given the. Um, the the otherwise the other areas of conversation where Peter Downing failed to come forward with saying anything impressive, then he probably was saying from little things big things grow because he was wanting to to put Gary's Gary Kansas dong in his right side of his mouth and Roger Toll's dong in the left side of his mouth and give him a bit of a double donkey. Uh, because, you know, he, I know he knows that when they're old and grey, someone else will have to... Oh, wait, no, sorry. He doesn't... He doesn't know that because he he's actually already well and truly been grey while they've still been active, no matter how uh, stupid in the things that they will say. <clears throat> but, yeah. Maybe he's double-hedging his bets because, you know... Why not, why not speak like you're simultaneously a woman that they've tried to sleep with and gotten knocked back by and a wart growing on, a, on an appendage or, a, or a, a phallus or something at the same time and say, well, from little things, big things grow. Um, so Peter Downing did take a, a big liking to that, that line of text. Uh, Yeah, how about this, Downing? Tell Gary and Roger that Freemasonry is not equivalent to a, a criminal psychology degree. Try that on them, Downing, see what happens. They'll bitch slap you, and you'll leave the room going, oh, oh. I'm South... How can you slap me? I'm only a woman. I'm Southlands Downing. Yeah, that's right. I I I I would I would prefer Peter Downing to to run the whole franchise over Roger and Gary, but if he wants to do that and keep his integrity intact, he should not he should not kiss their ass with 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 references like from little things big things grow. I mean, he, both Gary and Roger are Freemasons. They're involved in the religious 
praise of Lu- male Lucifer versus male Jehovah or whatever name you want to come up with for the, the Christian biblical God. It's hot male and male uh, psychological male archetype action. So, you know, if you if you if you just in the abject say from little things big things grow, both of them will get turned on. And that's gonna be a lot of stress to Gary Cans, who's he's already put his white like Yeah. No, Gary will be happy because then, you know Because then later he could tell Peter Downing that the reason his his wife's face grew older and more wrinkly than than uh, than his did what it would have been Peter Downing's fault, of course. Peter, how could you get in the, between me and my wife with your from little things, big things grow? That's what it'd say. Uh, religious people are always looking to shift the blame. Anyway, I was... Songs being dedicated to that to them and their stupid slogan. Um, yeah, and that must be about it, because nothing else would happen. Of course. 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 Of course.